A very warm welcome to everyone. This is me, Mariam Jaseel, of class 10A of Silver Hills Public School. I am extremely delighted to present a session on the topic Basis, Indicators, and pH in Everyday Life from the second chapter of class 10 Science and CRT text, that is, Acids, Bases, and Salts. Bases definitely serve important functions both inside and outside the scientific laboratory. In everyday life, bases play a role in many things from brushing our teeth, the food we eat, to the function of medicines we consume, and even the cleaning products we use at home. Without bases, many of the products we use at our homes would be functionless. Now, Let's have a close look at the very indispensable bases. Bases are those substances which are bitter in taste, soapy to touch, and turn red litmus to blue. In the presence of water, all bases give hydroxide ions. Bases conduct electricity in their aqueous solutions due to the presence of free ions. Some examples of bases are sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc. Bases can be divided into two types, that is water soluble bases and water insoluble bases. As we know, all bases do not dissolve in water. An alkali is a base that dissolves in water. Examples of alkali are sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, ammonium hydroxide, etc. Examples of water insoluble bases are calcium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, etc. To know more about bases, let's look at its chemical properties. How do bases react with metals? Strong bases react with active metals to produce hydrogen gas. That is, a base reacts with a metal to produce hydrogen gas and corresponding salt. Thus, these bases should not be stored in metal containers. Example, sodium hydroxide reacts with zinc metal to produce sodium zincate and hydrogen gas. How do bases react with non-metallic oxides? Bases react with non-metallic oxides that is acidic in nature to produce corresponding salt and water. This proves that non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. That is, a base reacts with a non-metallic oxide to produce corresponding salt and water. Example. Calcium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide to produce calcium carbonate and water. How do acids and bases react with each other? Acids react with bases to produce corresponding salt and water. In this reaction, acid neutralizes the base, that is, it nullifies the effect of the base and vice versa. Thus, this reaction is known as neutralization reaction. That is, a base reacts with an acid to produce corresponding salt and water. Example, sodium hydroxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce sodium chloride and water. Moving on, let's see the effect of dilution on an acid and a base. Mixing of an acid or base with water is termed as dilution. It results in the decrease in concentration of hydronium or hydroxide ion per unit volume and the acid or base is said to be diluted. When acid or base is added to water, their molecules dissociate to form ions. Example. Hydrochloric acid reacts with water to produce hydronium cation and chloride anion. 
Hydrogen cation reacts with water to produce hydronium cation. Sodium hydroxide in the presence of water produces sodium cation and chloride anion. Dissolving an acid or base in water is a highly exothermic reaction. Hence, care must be taken while doing it. The acid or base should always be added into water with constant stirring. And remember, water should never be added to concentrated acid as the heat generated may cause the mixture to splash out and even cause burns. How can we determine the strength of a base? The strength of a base depends on the number of hydroxide ions produced by a solution. Larger the number of hydroxide ions produced, stronger is the base. Moving to the next topic, indicators. How can we identify whether a substance is acidic or basic in nature? Indicators are those substances that change their color or odor when added into an acidic or alkaline medium to indicate the presence of acid or base. Indicators can be classified in the following ways. That is, natural indicators. These indicators are found in nature in plants. Example, litmus solution is a purple color dye that is extracted from the plant lichen belonging to the division Thallophyta. Some natural indicators along with their characteristic colors are provided in the table. Litmus is an indicator that shows red color in acidic medium while it shows blue color in alkaline medium. Red cabbage juice shows red color in acidic medium while it shows green color in basic medium. Turmeric juice shows yellow color in acidic medium while it shows reddish brown color in alkaline medium. The second classification of indicators is synthetic indicators. These indicators are synthesized in laboratory or industry. Example. Methyl orange, methyl red, phenolphthalein, etc. Some synthetic indicators along with their characteristic colors are provided in the table. Phenolphthalein is colorless in acidic medium while it shows pink color in basic medium and it is again colorless in neutral solution. Methyl orange shows red color in acidic medium while it shows yellow color in basic medium and again it is showing orange color in neutral solution. Moving to the third classification of indicators that is olfactory indicators. Those indicators that can change their color when added into an acidic or alkaline solution are termed as olfactory indicators. Onion and vanilla extract can be used as olfactory indicators. The smell of these two indicators can be detected in the presence of acid only and not in the presence of base. Universal indicators constitute the fourth classification of indicators. To judge how strong an acid or base is, a universal indicator is used. It is a mixture of several indicators and it shows different colors in different concentrations of hydrogen ion present in a solution. Now let's see what pH is and what is its significance. pH is a value that indicates the strength of an acid or base. It is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration present in the solution. pH of any substance can be detected by using pH paper or pH meter. The P in pH stands for potens which means power in German. It has values ranging from 0 that is very acidic to 14 that is very alkaline. If the pH of a substance is greater than 7 it is basic in nature. If the pH of a substance is equal to 7 it is neutral in nature. 
and if the pH of a substance is less than 7 then it is acidic in nature. Let's now see the significance of pH in everyday life by looking at some examples from our day to day life. The first example is survival of living organisms. Living organisms can survive only in a narrow range of pH change. Our body normally functions within the pH range of 7 to 7.8. If the pH of rainwater goes below 5.6, it is termed as acid rain. When acid rain flows into rivers, it lowers the pH of the river water and makes the survival of aquatic organisms difficult. The second example is pH of the soil. Every type of plant requires a specific pH range for its healthy growth. Hence, the nature of the soil is first determined by testing the pH of the soil and then a particular crop is grown in it. It is also suitable for selecting the fertilizer for a crop by testing the pH of the soil. Digestion of food is also based on the principle of pH. Hydrochloric acid present in the stomach helps in the digestion of food. But during indigestion, the stomach produces too much acid which causes pain and irritation. To correct the disturbed pH range, milk of magnesia, a mild base, is used as medicine. It is also called as an antacid as it reduces the effect of the acid. Preventing tooth decay is yet another example signifying pH in everyday life. If the pH of the mouth falls below 5.5, the decay of tooth enamel begins. The bacterium present in the mouth degrades the sugar and leftover food particles and produces acids that remain in the mouth after eating food. The best method to prevent tooth decay is to clean the mouth after eating food. To prevent tooth decay, toothpaste, which is basic in nature, is also used to neutralize the excess acid. Self-defense by animals and plants through chemical warfare is another example signifying pH in our day-to-day -day life. When insects like honeybee, ant, etc. bite, they inject formic acid into the skin that causes pain and irritation. If a mild base like baking soda is applied on the affected area, it gives relief. In a similar manner, nettle stings inject methanoic acid into the skin that causes burning pain. It is to be cured by rubbing the affected area with the leaves of dog plants. However, wasp stings inject a basic chemical into the body which is to be treated with vinegar. Life is so much involving acids and bases that pH value is an integral aspect of it. Hope pH and its significance makes us informed to the extent that we act wise in the way we deal with matter around us. I think I have done justice to the topic bases and pH and you have understood some important details regarding it. Thank you.